Hey, hey, all you Minties, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for a look inside of the Marvel art of George Pettis. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. And here we have the Marvel art of George Pettis. Huge fan of art books. I have several. Uh, some of them are mainly the ones that I like are art books on video games or sometimes anime or manga. But I do have a lot of these Marvel art of... Uh, I have the Jokasada. I have some of the Jim Lee DC icon books. But uh, let me know if you have any of those. If you have any art books and which ones your favorites are. And here is the latest one. This is the Marvel art of George Pettis. Here is what the spine looks like. And the back of the book with that image of Ultron from Kurt Busiek's run on Avengers. Now let's look at it under the dust jacket. Again, here is the front cover. So it does have a dust jacket. You have this nice image of the Kurt Busiek run on Avengers. Oh, I love this. Any any art with some of the new warriors and they're like Marvel Boy. I'm sorry, Justice and Firestar. Man, that's awesome. Now, as far as the um, the mentions of the book, it is definitely as tall as a Marvel Omnibus. So it's a really tall book. And it is longer than your Omnibus editions. Uh, however, not as thick, of course. But definitely longer. Now, let's take a look inside of the book. Let's go ahead and get this opened. It's a black bookend pages, so it is a hardcover book. The book retails for $50. And this awesome image from Avengers number one by Kurt Busiek and George Perez. Uh, it is written by Jess Harold and Rodolfo Maraguchi does the design of the book. You have an introduction here by Kurt Busiek. Here's your table of contents, which I, I had to read it. I, I haven't read all the book, but I did have to read the introduction and the afterword. So the introduction is written by Kurt Busiek, written in August of 2020. And then there is an afterword by Ralph Macchio. So this talks about the origins of George Perez in the Marvel Universe. Not the character, the artist, where he started, and where he was headed. Because uh, George, at this time, is retired, or semi-retired. He said he's not going to do any more shows. But I still see his name pop up as a guest here and there, I think doing virtual stuff. But this goes through the order, in chronological order, really cool, of his art at Marvel, where he started, how he started. And there's also quotes from him talking about, for example, his time here doing some martial arts book, how he really wasn't good at drawing martial arts because uh, there are people that could handle drawing fighting sequences in comic books. And he just had to give it that extra Marvel style. Uh, and there's one of his most popular characters the white tiger with one of the most simplest costumes i think he even says that here one of the simplest designs that's right and as a matter of fact i think the white tiger is something that he did uh one page for i can't remember what book it was it was in the marvel book um skipping here because we're not going to go through the whole book but it shows like where he got his big start which is the fantastic four era and then he eventually went over to Marvel Team Up. He did a couple of annuals here and there until, you know, he found his footing. And eventually, it does talk about his time at DC, of course, not showing much of that stuff. Oh, my gosh. But his era in Avengers was so awesome. Hopefully, looking at this in this format, in this big oversized format, one day I would love to have this stuff in Omnibus Edition. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Um, cause he went all the way past issue 200, the yesterday quest solid. And he talks about how beast is one of his favorite characters. I actually knew this, uh, but he put a lot of his personality into the character of Hank McCoy. So there's stuff here from, um, the past There's stuff here from the present, like some of the recolors, some things in here I've never seen. Because I, I didn't know he was working on the book. Uh, the infamous Avengers 200. But as you can tell, some of the stuff has newer color. And this is the Marvel 2 and 1, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So he, he talks um, in here. I know that he was really good friends with uh, a lot of the editors at the time. Like Ralph Macchio, uh, Mark Grunewald. So anytime they needed somebody to come in and draw some issues with some pizzazz. With some of that Marvel style. They would get him to draw it. There's a wonderful quote here. 
uh, from Ralph Macchio that I think perfectly describes why we love George Pettis. Uh, there's the first appearance or the first American appearance of Captain Britain. Yes, one of my favorite covers of all time. I remember he did an, um, I think it was Giant Size number three or Annual number three of X Men, and he drew Storm. Oh my goodness, what a goddess! So perfect. So there's quotes in here from editors, from inkers, from other artists, from writers. This is the Bizarre Adventure story, I think, with the uh, Iceman. Written by Joe Duffy, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. I got to work with my first female writer, Joe Duffy. That's right. And then some of the stuff that has been printed already in Epic Collection, in Omnibus Edition. Some of his Black Widow work. I actually like her hair like that. All wet, less curly. Man, Perez can draw some gorgeous women. And then, of course, um, we do they, they do talk about how he left Marvel to go over to DC, work on Wonder Woman, did War of the Gods, but wanted to come back and draw every Marvel character. And that, as they say, is dumb. That is, they say, is not that. <laughs> the rest, of, as they say, is history, is what I meant to say. That's how we got this amazing Infinity Gauntlet story. Uh, there, there is a beautiful love letter from Kurt Busiek's opening talking about his first issue. Or, I think it was on Twitter, he was talking about somebody asked what one of the most anticipated uh, things you were waiting for in the mail was. And for him, is was when he was 15 years old, waiting for an issue of Avengers. I think it was 147. Yep, 147. And he talks about, you, you know, just, it was delayed, and he had a mail subscription to it, and he couldn't get off the porch. As soon as the mailman came, er, maestro, yes, with Peter David. Um, as soon as the mailman came, he got his book out and he started reading it. Love that intro. And he talks about why that was, because of George Pettis. And then, of course, how much of a blessing it was when him and Perez got to kick start the Avengers after uh, Heroes Reborn. So during the Heroes Return era, they got to do Avengers. Oh, that's so awesome. You know, going from a fan that he was, Kurt Busiek, to idolizing an artist like George Perez, and then working with said artist on a book that you were anticipating in the mail, that's like coming full circle. That's, that's freaking amazing. That's the stuff that movies are made of, or dreams are made of. But, yeah, this, if you've not read this, I hope one day they reprint this era, because uh, it is freaking worth reading. My favorite Avengers run, my favorite Kang storyline is in here. Um, I think I mentioned the price is $50. The book has 220 pages, and it's hard not to flip through here and talk, oh, look, Justice and Firestar, and not talk about each uh, book. There's, of course, the classic Marvel vs. DC stuff. The George Pettis drawn Marvel vs. DC. Or Avengers vs. JLA. But you can read and find out about all that stuff behind the scenes yourself. Oh my gosh. I think I still have this poster somewhere. This is one of my favorite pieces of art. Oh my gosh. Nobody can draw dynamic character like stances like this and tiny little filling up each blank space with a character in a unique post there is no copy and paste here there's no you know trimming down thor and flipping him to be superman none of that is in here each one is a unique piece of artwork and to quote ralph macchio on the back here and you can find out what the legacy is and all that uh legacy he is still alive uh but ralph macchio puts it freaking perfectly and he talks about looking at george perez's uh characters uh, whether it's marvel or at dc it is how the character should look. So if you're an artist, if you want to know what the thing is supposed to look like, all 360 degrees of the thing, you look at a George Perez thing. Um, if you look, if you want to know what the Hulk looks like, you look at George Perez's Hulk for inspiration. And that says a lot about the artist because um, it is true. It's the, the He was the definitive Marvel artist. And he draws heavy inspiration from one of my favorite artists too, like John Buscema. And there are other... Other artists have drawn inspiration from Perez himself. But, man, what a freaking awesome book. Uh, but that, as they say, is that. No, that, as they say, is not that. That's the second time I've used that. Okay, I was meant to talk about the binding. It is sewn binding. 
Not that you need much of an eye, and the book lays over really nice. I'm sure you saw some splash or spread pages, like this gorgeous piece right here. It is printed on this thick, glossy paper, but I did want to point out the binding and the paper quality. And now, that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this particular art book. If you're a fan of art books, let me know in the comments down below which ones your favorite ones are. And if you want to see some of my favorite art books that I've owned, maybe I should do a top 10. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. Um, again, this was the Uncanny Omar. If you have any questions, leave those questions down below. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. Thank you so much to our existing patrons for making videos like this possible. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy, stay safe, and much loved.